You're listening to Sunny Side Up with Adam and Kim on CJLO 1690 AM. Yeah, see, so I don't get what the big deal is about why we have to call it a holiday tree. Because it's a Christmas tree. That tree signifies Christmas. So why do we have... There's that whole... A couple years ago, that whole big controversy about calling it a holiday tree. But it's in fact a Christmas tree. Only Christians celebrate it for Christmas. So we shouldn't change the name. Or Jews who eat pork. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Chris Bown has gotten himself into some more trouble. Shocking. That anger management seems to really be working out for him. He uh, went on a little rampage this weekend. Yeah, so he was mad at Walmart and other stores that were refusing to stock their shelves with his CD. And they were saying they claimed, the stores claimed that... um, they just ran out of CDs and they didn't have any more in the back. But he uh, he went on Twitter and he was, one of his posts was, I'm not biting my tongue about shit else. The industry can kiss my ass. And then... Come on, put on the Chris Brown voice. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I have one. I didn't, I didn't practice. Um, and then he says, what the F? Yeah, I said it and I ain't retracting shit. And then he goes on again. <laughs> End quote. <laughs> <laughs> and then he goes on again and says, I'm tired of this shit. Major stores are blackballing my CD, not stocking the shelves and lying to customers. What the F do I got to do? He continues. <laughs> the manager told me that when there are new releases, it's mandatory to put them on shelves, but no sign of graffiti. BS. And then he goes on to say, we talked to managers and they didn't even know anything. Wow. But they had Alicia Keys album ready for release for this coming Tuesday. And then he actually went to a Walmart in uh, Connecticut, I believe, and he said that they didn't have his album in the back, not on shelves, and he saw it for himself with his own eyes. And that was his big rant on Twitter. First of all, CDs are kind of obsolete now anyways. That's true. But um, so he causes this commotion on Twitter, and then yesterday he deletes his Twitter account. (laughs) Gone. He says bye-bye. And uh, he made a post yesterday saying, I want to thank my fans for all the support. I love y'all. Goodbye with like a million exclamation points. So he is gone. But I don't know if I think he's going to come back because <laughs> Twitter is really all he is going on right now, I think. You know, I think the world is really going to miss his um, <laughs> his writing style. His poetic prose. <laughs> his poetic prose. The way he could just like, look at a situation and examine it so prolifically. I don't know. What do you think of Chris Brown? He's a douche. <laughs> <laughs> Way to be blunt, Adam. He is. No one likes him. I don't like him. Um, and I don't think that anyone should take kids to see his concerts. He's he's a bad influence, and I don't think he should be anywhere near kids that are that are impressionable. What about his music? Do you like his music? And his music was never that good. I was never such a big fan of his no? music. And uh, he could sing, he could dance. But he's, <laughs> but you know what? In his industry, it's more about good relations with the public than about how good your music is in the end. I mean... Obviously, you have to have a certain level of singing ability and dance ability, mm-hmm. but he has to sell himself, and yeah. he hasn't done that. So, um, good product. riddance. I was a fan of his music. I'm not like diehard fan, but I liked. He had some good songs, but uh, yeah, kind of went down my books with the whole Rihanna thing. And even Rihanna, you know, I'm not <clears throat> that interested in her anymore. No, me neither. Again, her, I wasn't like a diehard fan. She's no Jessica Simpson in my my point of view. Uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> no, but she has some good songs too. But uh, it was it was. Um... Not starting a discussion about Jessica Simpson, are we? <laughs> Baseball teams make money enough. Ashley Dupree, former Governor Elliot Spitzer's prostitute, is now a columnist for the New York Post. She has a column called "Ask Ashley." This woman, Ashley Dupree, had an affair with the Governor Elliot's. Spitzer and this caused a whole big controversy controversy sorry and now she's a columnist for the New York Post so I'm in journalism school and this one gets a journalism job so note to self have an affair get a career no, <laughs> just kidding but that, that is your trajectory actually I see it <laughs> <laughs> no 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 but um i'm actually surprised that they would give her the job i mean me too papers aren't doing as well as they used to be and the new york post is no known for like that kind of like salacious journalism <laughs> so i'm not that surprised i'm just surprised that they would choose someone who's been forgotten about i would think mm, i think true. i think her story's been kind of pushed back now we don't think about her anymore yeah but i guess that's why they're bringing her back unfortunately <laughs> and plus she's very very young she doesn't know much 
That's what I'm saying. Like, we're going to get, we're going to graduate. We're going to get out of school. And who knows what the market's going to be like if we're going to get jobs. But then this one, they're just handing out, you know, journalism jobs, columnist. I've already got three governors lined up, so we're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So one of the questions someone wrote in was, are there telltale signs a man isn't happy in his marriage? And I just figured, well, of course she would know. <laughs> but um, this is our response. Let me know what you guys think. Guys are primal. They're proud and need to be treated like they're proud and special. Girlfriends do that for the most part. But I think that wives with children have so much pressure on them, the natural thing is for the kids to take priority. The husband feels secondary and in one form or another may seek out that required special attention outside the marriage. And that's when they go see Ashley Dupree. She gets all kinds of questions like, how do I know if my daughter may be getting into trouble? I guess that's her specialty. (laughs) She would know, you know. It, It is her specialty. And she's only 26, right? <laughs> um, I actually don't know how old she is. She's in her early 20s. And to be giving out advice, I mean, not that the people who write for Can West can give out any good advice anyways. <laughs> I mean, there's those two women, what are their names? Who That fill in for Ann Landers or whatever. Let, oh, what's their names? I don't know. Anyways, the two women in the back of the Gazette who who basically have nothing good to say except for, go go get some counseling, dear. Because, you know, they're both 80-year-old women living in Florida who have nothing better to do with their lives and dispense useless advice that no one cares about. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and get paid for it. Top You're dollar. so cheery this morning, Adam. Yeah. Or they have people like Susan Schwartz who writes about her kettle. This week, um, actually Monday, she had a story about her kettle um, talking about it boiling and her being distracted because she, like, dropped her watch in her bedroom. And I was like, really, Anne? This is the best thing you have to write about? I'd rather hear Ashley Dupre. At least, you know, she's getting some. Do you do you think Ashley will be the next, like, Dear Anne? Ask Ashley. No. No? <laughs> Not at all. Another question is, what's the no-fail Christmas gift I can get my wife that will make her feel special and loved? And she says that women are really not as complicated as men think. If we love you, it doesn't take much. It's the little things that married people sometimes forget, like spending romantic alone time together. I think sometimes you get so wrapped up in the kids, you put your relationship second by default, and that's definitely not healthy for the relationship. That's actually pretty good advice, though, and even the earlier question. No, it's condescending, and I'm sure she has a copy editor that's going through that and just deleting whatever crap she puts in there that no, no one wants to read. But I, I agree with her with that, that first question I mentioned, that uh, you know kids take the priority, and sometimes the husband does you know, go on the back burner. And it's important to to remember that. I mean, I'm not married. I don't have kids. But I think that once you have kids, they really do are, they really are your priority. It's, but it's coming from someone who's, you know, representing the complete opposite end. I can't take her advice (laughs) seriously at all because I know behind it, she's smirking saying, oh, I fucked him good. Happy Hanukkah, happy Hanukkah. You're listening to Sunny Side Up with Adam and Kim on CJLO 1690 AM. I had an interesting exam experience the other day, and I know a bunch of you are in exams right now. Anyway, so I had an exam on Friday. I was in a room with about 30 people, and this guy who sat in front of me, I just wanted to kill him. (laughs) First of all, he's one of those guys that he knows a teacher from before. Okay. Not like they played basketball, like he had him as a teacher before. And he, you know, during class, he's always like, hey, sir, you know, uh, how was your weekend? And the guy's (laughs) like, eh, well, uh, my weekend was good. (laughs) And it's like, okay, who cares? We know that you know each other, like, don't shove it in everyone's faces. But then... He comes into the exam and he sits right in front of me and I was like, oh, this guy's going to be trouble. First of all, he dresses like he came out of 1996 and he wears this old flannel sweater. During the exam, he just keeps on asking the teacher questions like over and over. So the first time he brings him, he's like, hey, sir. And the teacher comes over. Yes. How can I help you? And uh, he goes, uh, you know, sir, I'm writing this thing about uh, the prime minister and uh, I wanted to know what you thought about it. And the teacher's like, well, this is your test. So uh Good luck. First of all, I just figured it out. You sound like Sylvester Stallone when he was Rocky. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> I knew it reminded me of something. So then his pen runs out. And of course, oh. everyone in the exam room has to know about his pen <laughs> running out. <laughs> and then finally he gets a pen and then he calls the teacher over and he's like, hey, sir, uh, I switched pen color from like black to blue. So uh, is that OK? And the teacher's like, yes, that's OK. <laughs> Anyways, after the millionth question where I wanted to stab the guy with my pencil, he finally turns around to the girl sitting next to me and he goes, this is a really easy test, eh? And I was like, a really easy test? You had to tell him about your pen color. 
<laughs> it's not easy for you. <laughs> Ugh. 